everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Mercy Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we are going to be talking about pulmonary tuberculosis. I know a lot of us must have heard about a pulmonary tuberculosis but a particular student specifically told me to create a video on pulmonary tuberculosis so that is why today i'm going to be telling you all you need to know about the pulmonary tuberculosis the definition the causes the mode of transmission the pathophysiology the signs and symptoms the nursing intervention and also the drugs used for pulmonary tuberculosis but before we go into details kindly click on the subscribe button turn on the notification button so you don't miss out let's go there pulmonary tuberculosis. Pulmonary tuberculosis is an infectious disease that primarily affects the lungs but can invade other body systems. Most times whenever we hear pulmonary tuberculosis we feel it's only the lungs that is being affected. No, when the lungs are being affected and the lymphatic system comes in, the lymphatic system will help to spread these things to your liver, to your kidney and to all other organs in the body. So in terms of pulmonary tuberculosis, it is primarily affecting what the lungs, but later it can invade other body systems. Then it takes us to the causes of pulmonary tuberculosis. The major cause of pulmonary tuberculosis is mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the cause of pulmonary tuberculosis and there's something special about this bacteria in the sense that this bacteria loves oxygen this bacteria what loves oxygen that is why most times the um, the bacilli of this mycobacterium tuberculosis usually reside at the apex the up the upper part of the lungs when they invade the lungs so the next thing we're going to be talking about is the mode of transmission the mode of transmission of pulmonary tuberculosis is through droplets. For example, I am infected with pulmonary tuberculosis. Whenever I cough, I sneeze. Somebody close to me is possibly going to inhale what I just coughed out or what I sneezed out. So that's how pulmonary tuberculosis is being transmitted from one person to another. It's transmitted what? Through droplets. These droplets are in the air. So that is why it is advisable when a nurse wants to manage a patient with pulmonary tuberculosis, he or she has to put on what? Has to put on the N95 face masks. All right. Then the incubation period of pulmonary tuberculosis is usually one to three weeks, depending on how strong the immune system is. This pulmonary tuberculosis can remain dormant after affecting someone. If your immune system is strong, wow, that's perfect. We'll be discussing that in the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis. And another thing we have is risk factor. Who are at risk of developing pulmonary tuberculosis? One of the risk factors is overcrowding. Overcrowding is one of the risk factors of pulmonary tuberculosis because when an area is overcrowded and someone is has tuberculosis and unfortunately unfortunately coughs at that bacterium is now in the air and that bacterium will be inhaled by somebody that is healthy or somebody that is not infected and finally finally that person becomes infected so the other is reduced immunity people with reduced immunity they are likely going to go down with pulmonary tuberculosis when they inhale this mycobacterium tuberculosis because when your immunity is not strong, it will not be able to withstand the bacterial infection. For example, people that have HIV and AIDS, people that have AIDS, they are predisposed, they are at risk of developing what? Pulmonary tuberculosis. Then also, we have kids less than the age of five years, maybe kids that are lower than the age of five years, because their immunity is not strong enough, their immunity is not strong to actually handle that. Then also, we have substance abuse. 
people that actually abuse drugs through especially those that abuse drugs with IV, they are also predisposed or at risk of coming down with what pulmonary tuberculosis. That takes us to the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis proper. In terms of the pulmonary, to, in terms of pathophysiology generally, there's an outline I normally give my students on how to write pathophysiology of any disease condition. Normally, you define, you state the causes, the mode of transmission, so on and so forth. In terms of the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis, what happens first is that an individual is being exposed to that particular organism which is your mycobacterium tuberculosis when someone coughs or when someone sneezes so when there's an exposure to the organism that person what inhales it so it inhales it there's deposition of bacilli in the lungs it goes straight to the lungs so when the person inhales it goes where it goes to the lungs when it gets to the lung there's an immune system response the immune system responds by sending leukocytes. And you know leukocytes, they are the one that helps our body to fight against uh, bacteria. They help our body to fight against infection. So the immune system of our body responds. How do they respond? They respond by sending what? Leukocytes to that area. Thereby creating an inflammatory response. So when the inflammatory response is created, the body... Uh, take charge of it, there's going to be an encapsulation of that organism. For example, if it is um, it's someone with a healthy immune system, someone that's healthy, that the immune system is okay, that bacilli will be encapsulated. They will keep it, it's like keeping it there. It's not going to cause those signs and symptoms. It's not going to reflect the signs and symptoms associated with pulmonary tuberculosis. There will be encapsulation. And that particular region in the lungs, where that encapsula uh, encapsulation takes place is known as what? The primary focal or the primary focus. But if there's a drop in immunity, if there's a drop in the immune system, or the individual immune system is not strong enough, what happens is that there's going to be invasion of the lung and the surrounding tissues. So the lymphatic system are going to move it, uh, to do its work. There's going to be invasion and there's going to be what? Impairment of lung function. The lungs will not be able to carry out that normal function it's used to carry out before. And when that happens, it's going to result in a signs and symptoms, which the number one here is dyspnea, difficulty with breathing. And when there is difficulty in breathing, the patient, you see them having hemoptysis, coughing of blood as a result of erosion of the blood vessels around that area. So the patient is going to be having hemoptysis, coughing out blood. The patient is going to be having pyrexia, increase in body temperature. The patient is going to be having anorexia. Anorexia, the patient will not be able to eat, no appetite. And when somebody is having anorexia, the next thing that should come to your mind is what? Weight loss. Then also, there's going to be chest pain. There's going to be cough. There's going to be fatigue, tired. And there's going to be night sweats. From the signs and symptoms of pulmonary tuberculosis, your brain should be calculating the nursing diagnosis for pulmonary tuberculosis. Looking at the signs and symptoms now for pulmonary tuberculosis, there's dyspnea. So in the in diagnosis, we are going to be having what? Ineffective breathing pattern. We are going to be having what? Hypertemia. We are going to be having what? Acute pain. And we are still going to be having what? Imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements. Do you get? So that is what takes place what? In the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis. If your immune system is very, very strong, it will be encapsulated. It's not going to cause any signs and symptoms. You're not going to be coughing. You're not going to be having pyrexia. You're not going to be having any of those obvious signs and symptoms of pulmonary tuberculosis. But when your immune system is not strong, it's going to lead to the damage of the lungs. It's going to lead to um, the invasion of this bacteria by the lungs. And when that happens, it's going to impair the function of the lungs. And that is going to result in the signs and symptoms you see when it comes to what? Pulmonary tuberculosis. Then that takes us to the nursing intervention and also the drugs used in pulmonary tuberculosis. Before we talk about the nursing intervention, let's talk about some tests some diagnostic evaluation that are carried out for you to confirm if an individual has tuberculosis or not. So the first one we have here is the Matos skin test. 
The matter skin test involves an injection being given on your skin, the arm. When it's been given, you take like 48 to 72 hours. They check the induration that has been created. So the size of that induration will determine if an individual is positive for tuberculosis or not. Then we have the blood test. We have the sputum culture. Then we also have the test estuary. So these are common tests that are used to confirm if an individual has what? If an individual has tuberculosis or not. Then it, that takes us to the nursing intervention. The first thing that you have to take note of are your safety precautions. Your safety precaution is very, very important. You have to talk about washing your hands, donning your gloves. You have to talk about putting on N95. Your ventilation is very important because once this patient coughs, you inhale, possibility that you are going down with tuberculosis is on the high side. So you have to what, safe, take um, into consideration your safety precaution. Then also, don't stay close. These patients with pulmonary tuberculosis should be isolated from other patients. The doors should be always should be closed. The doors should watch. The doors should be closed to avoid the bacteria from spreading from one room to an other. So you have to isolate this patient. Then also, the patient should wear surgical masks when leaving the room. For example, this test that have been carried out, some investigations, this patient needs to go out of the ward. So the patient has to put on what? Should have to put on surgical mask when leaving the ward. Then the other we have, most patients are treated at home. They are treated as outpatient, uh, out, as outpatient department. So their drugs is usually between 6 to 12 months. So they can't stay in the hospital all day long. So you have to give them their drugs and they are treated on outpatient basis. Then also, education. Head educating this patient is of paramount importance. You have to head educate this patient about their drugs, about of avoiding overcrowding, about staying at home, isolation. This patient has to what? Stay isolated. This patient has to be alone. She has to stay isolated from, stop going to school, stop going to church, stop going to offices to avoid spreading this bacteria to other See, he or she has tested negative for pulmonary tuberculosis. Then also tell this patient whenever they cough, whenever they sneeze, they should do that in a paper, a tissue paper, and discard properly. And then also directly observe therapy. Directly observe therapy is when this patient is being monitored closely to ensure that he or she takes their drugs. Though it's a nine months duration, a six months duration, or a 12 months duration, a, a healthcare practitioner can usually go to this man's house to ensure that he takes his drugs, can go to the woman's house and ensure that he or she takes the drugs or give them directly. That's why it's directly observed therapy. Then also, when it comes to um, the nursing management in severe cases, you have to talk about breathing. You have to talk about how you manage for breathing, position this patient in a semi fowler's position. You have to talk about um, giving oxygen when necessary, giving prescribed oxygen. You have to talk about that. Then you have to talk about hypertemia. If this patient is running temperature, having pyrexia, you have to talk about tepid spongy. You have to talk about opening nearby windows. You have to talk about well-ventilated room when managing for hypertemia. Then nutrition. You have to talk about giving this patient well nutritious food to help boost the immunity and also aid recovery because this patient is having anorexia and weight loss. There's going to be risks, there's going to be imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements. Then also, side effects of the drug should not be neglected. The side effects of these drugs used in the treatment of pulmonary tuberculosis should not be neglected when managing a patient with pulmonary tuberculosis. Then that takes us to the drugs proper used in the management of pulmonary tuberculosis. In terms of the medication used in the treatment of pulmonary tuberculosis, the first we have the first line of action drugs and the second line of action drugs. So the first one we have here is the pyrazinamide, the etambutamol, the rifampicin, and the isonazide. All these ones, these four here, are first line of action drugs. They are used towards the treatment of pulmonary tuberculosis. They are having bacteriostatic and bactericidal effect. They are helping to fight the bacteria. They are helping to inhibit the growth of those proteins in the bacteria. Then also we have streptomycin. It's a second line drugs. 
they hardly use streptomycin because of the complication arises or the side effects i mean arising from streptomycin it has this autotoxic effect because it damaged the cranial nerve aids hearing so when a patient is on streptomycin, you have to be checking for the hearing. The hearing, you have to be assessing the patient's auditory senses to know if this patient is having hearing loss or not. So, and also, in terms of the complication of pulmonary tuberculosis, we have pneumothorax, we have pleurisy, which is also known as pleuritis, we have anemia, we have pleural effusion, and we have pneumonia. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you very much for staying to you. Don't forget to like, don't forget to drop your comments in the comment section, and also don't forget to share. See you in our next video.